Hey guys, how's it going? Ezekiel the Barber back with another haircut video for you. Thanks for tuning in to In The Cut with Ezekiel the Barber and this young gentleman right here. It's about that time. My man needs to get cleaned back up. Time to get fresh. So let's go ahead and get him hooked up with a fresh cut. If you're not already, please uh, like, share, subscribe, give a thumbs up as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this cut. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. So basically today we're going to do a mid fade where there's a one on the side. So basically we're going to take that number one midway. So mid fade number one on the side. We're going to get that number one guard and take it about midway. So this is before the cut. So this is how things are going before the cut. Definitely time to get back in and get fresh again. A long shot from what we usually do for this young man. So let's get him back uh, and right standing. So here's a 360 version. Get a chance to see everything all the way around. So on this particular haircut, I decided to start on the top. Sometimes I'll start from the bottom, but the hair was so long on top that I decided to kind of attack that first. So spraying a little water, it helps keep everything intact all the hair together it allows me to find my guideline when I'm cutting the hair a lot easier so that's what I'm doing here just spraying a little water on top so that we can take some of that hair off the top get it out of his face it is pretty long all right so we're gonna start with the shear and the comb so got my shears have my comb now it's all about finding out how much he wants off the top now this hair that hangs over the side is a really long piece. He let me know it was really bugging him, so that was, this was one of the first things that I decided to attack. So went straight in just to take that long piece off as it was sticking over the side. So I just basically want to make sure that that goes in with all the rest of the hair. Boom, so that's out of there. All right, and then we'll get this last little piece in the back. And then we'll start working on that top. So now just looking to find how much he wants off. He said he basically wanted to do a slight trim. So there it is there. We'll go ahead and take that down. Once I find my guideline, it's basically like connecting the dots. Once I find a guideline, I'll just pull portions of the hair that hasn't been cut along with portions of the hair that has been cut, and I connect those dots. So we'll see if we can get you a better angle. I like to pull the hair straight up from whatever direction it's growing from to make sure that I get the most accurate uh, cut as possible to make everything as even as possible. I like to cut from pretty much every different angle, north, south, east, and west, just to ensure that everything is pretty much even all the way around. So.
right, so that's looking pretty good here. He pretty much just wanted to do a small trim. And so that's basically what we did here. All right, so since I've done the top already, I just kind of want to separate that from the side so that I won't cut any hair off when it gets, uh, when we get to the fade. So I like to put these clamps right there in the hair, kind of right in the parietal ridge area where it separates the side going in the, to the top of the head. So just as is, and then all the other hair you see me combing down just to make it a lot easier for the clippers to cut through. So pretty important. So you see his natural parting here. We uh, pretty much don't have to put any clamps there. His hair already naturally parts there. So just on the other side where it kind of hangs over. So here we're gonna use the number one guard. We're gonna go about midway with that. So that kind of gives it that mid fade. And here I'm using the Oster Octane Cordless Clipper. So if you've watched my previous videos, definitely one of my favorite clippers. This clipper is a beast. Now, very important, just always wanna get really clean guidelines. So sometimes you'll kinda go over the same area a few times just to make everything look consistent and even so very important in you know getting a clean fade so once again using those oster octane clippers with the number one metal guard or metal clip whatever you call it As you see, sometimes when I get to the top of my fade, I kind of like to pull out instead of creating a super hard line, it's a softer line, which kind of creates an easier transition for the fade, so you don't kind of create hard lines that are hard to erase. So, definitely better to work smarter. to get a little bit of hair off gotta keep hair off the client keep everything clean I like to have my palette when cutting as clean as possible as you see me just going over that number one just making sure everything is really clean hair grows from different angles so it's kind of imperative that you do cut from kind of every different angle or see where that hair is growing from and then cut against the grain. Alright, so everything looks pretty good here. Now I'm just gonna go with my next metal guard, which is the three and a half, 3.5 metal. So just gonna set my next guideline. Now sometimes you can go up in guards from the one to the two to the three, but the majority of the time I kinda like to jump over. So if I'm using a one, I'll jump up, use my three for the top, and then blend the middle in. So you'll kinda get a chance to see exactly how I do that right here. Now 
now I'm just pretty much looking to go straight up with this guard, not looking to dig into the top or anything. Eventually, I'll go back and clip her over comb, kind of whatever sticks over the side that the client doesn't want. And once again, just always looking to keep everything nice and clean. As much hair off the client as possible that's already been cut. All right, so <laughs> that looks pretty good there. Let's go ahead and uh, get back to the cut, get back to the action. So you see we've used the one, the three and a half. We've taken a little hair off the top so far. So we have that hard line there. So I'm gonna use the number one. Since I've used a true number one, which is closed, I'm gonna open this guard up so it can kind of transition that fade going into that number three. All right, so we'll go about a finger's width length. Let me see it there. So I have that lever all the way open. And just going up just a little bit. And just pretty much going for that hard line, just looking to erase the hard line. Kind of create that fade, that transition that you see there. Now eventually you'll see me kind of close that lever up as I get closer to the bottom where I use the number one. So the closer that I get to that bottom where I use the number one, I'll close that lever all the way up. The more that I get to the top where I'm trying to transition um, that fade, I'll open that lever. So this is before the cut. Once again, a long way from where we are. This is in the cut. This is kind of what I usually do for this young man. Now he was away at school, so I definitely appreciate you for not cheating on your barber. Brought me back some good work. So this is what we normally do. I've been cutting this young man up for a while, ever since high school, now he's in college, so growing up. So we're gonna use the one and a half. We've already, already used the one with that lever open, kind of giving me a one and a half, but this is a true one and a half guard. And then when I open that lever up, it's gonna kind of give me closer to a two. So that's why I transitioned to the one and a half. So we're gonna go up even a little higher than we did with that one guard. And as you can see, it's kind of transitioning pretty smooth going into that number three. Now eventually, yes, I will probably use a number two guard just to kind of ensure that I've gone through all the steps and covered all the bases. Now cutting hair, you're going to always go back to areas that wasn't, you know, don't seem as clean as others. So you just kind of want to go back and clean up any areas that don't look as even as all the other areas, wherever you use that uh, guard to set that guideline. So, you know, if you use the two or three near the top, that's what you're going to use to go over whatever that area is. Sometimes you could use uh, the next guard under to kind of get a more smoother transition. But all that definitely comes with experience and time. So here I decided to do his taper. So we're gonna go ahead and close that lever up. Anytime I use that closed lever, it's gonna give me a very bulge and stubbly look. Whenever I open that lever up with a wall clipper, it's gonna give me to pretty much like a half. So slightly different from the Andes Masters where when I open that lever up, it's gonna give me close to a number one, a true number one. So you just have to pretty much know your tools. So whatever you have in your arsenal, the more you use them, the more you'll get a chance to know them. So the closer I am to the bottom, I'm closing that lever up, creating a bald look. The more I get into the fade and go a little higher, you see me using the open lever. I'm not looking to go too high to mess up, you know, the guidelines that we've already set. All right, 
So here we're gonna use the Babyliss trimmers. I like the fact that they have long teeth. We're gonna go ahead and line everything up. Since everything's not bald back here, there is still um, a line that could be left. So I just like to clean everything up. Just makes the haircut look a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. Anytime I'm in or around the ears, I just always like to pull that ear down and then clean up everything really clean. Alright, right, cool. One of my favorite clippers by far, the Babyliss Trimmers. Definitely a favorite. So we're just going to line them up, going to pull those uh, hairs that like to stick out. I'm going to go ahead and comb those down. So this is kind of where we're at in the cut with the Ezekiel the Barber. As I break down this haircut for you, a number one mid fade. Now there is no rhyme or reason with cutting. I like to cut to a look. So I'll kind of follow some steps just to get started, but eventually I'll go into my own freestyle and clean up areas that I feel need to be, you know, a little cleaner or what have you. Now in this case, I just want to finish up that lineup. So just looking to pull the hair up that we want to stay. The hair that we want to go, we're just cutting that down. So you just kind of have to have that eye or eye for it. So we'll go ahead and do this side. And whatever you do on one side, you just want to follow those same steps on the opposite side. That's why I like cutting with the system. It allows me to know exactly basically what I did. Now, anytime I do the lineup, I always like to check with my client and see if they need any uh, eyebrow work. Some just like, you know, want a slight trim, just clean everything up. It does make a difference, uh, believe it or not. So you might get a chance to see it here, a slight difference. So I have the number one guard. I'm just going to slightly go over his uh, eyebrow, I'm not looking to go real hard or anything, just looking to clean up any little hairs that kind of pop out or stick out. And then I'll follow that back with another shape up my liners and this is basically what I do Once again, safety always first, so anytime I'm around the ear, just like, always like to kind of pull that ear out of the way, use the corner of the clipper, depending on the angle. So. All right, so this is kind of where we are with the cut. I'm just gonna go ahead and taper the sides. The sideburn is here, so I'm gonna close that lever up. And as I go up, I'll slightly open that lever up until we get into that number one. Not looking to go too high you could do a low taper a mid taper or a high taper um, this client in particular likes a low taper so that's why we're just keeping it pretty low so a low ball taper going in and I just want to repeat the same steps on the opposite side so there you see it there One of my favorite clippers, the Andis Masters Courtless Clipper. So whatever steps that I've gone through already with the wall or the uh, metal clip, I always kind of like to follow it and finish up with the Andis Masters. I just like the way that this clipper finishes um, the look. It's a very thorough, very good clipper. However, I don't like to use this clipper on the entire haircut for some reason. I do feel like there's a better and faster way. Um, 
there's always pros and cons to clippers so these clippers andy's are pretty known for sometimes getting uh, a little hot especially when you're doing haircut after haircut so this is basically my workaround is i'll use other clippers or other ways like the metal uh, clips or guards and then finish the haircut up as far as far as polishing everything up with the andes masters so here just looking to blow dry the hair add a little volume to the hair now he likes to style his hair kind of backwards and slightly to the, to the left so almost like a slight undercut not really a hard undercut and an undercut is basically where the hair extends over the cut on the side so it extends over the fade so sometimes it's long sometimes it's short sometimes uh, every everything goes right in there is no um, hangover from the hair to basically create an undercut so here just once again looking to get any loose hair out uh, blow dry the hair to add volume before we apply any product All right so animation for you guys all right so back to the haircut so here I'm gonna use a little bit of red one and this is the turquoise one so the turquoise color is the dry uh, matte finish look definitely love this product so I like to put the product on the hair not really soak it into the scalp then just kind of use this uh, comb here which kind of mimics uh, the finger from the white spacing in the comb to kind of give it that natural look that natural wavy look now sometimes to add that really good volume you just want to blow dry and comb the hair in the you know the direction that they want to style it at the same time here I decided to use some thinning shears it looked a little heavy coming off the edges now normally I would wait and put the product in after but in this case um, after I did the cut put the product it still looked a little thicker than I uh, kind of wanted here so I just kind of want that hair to form in pretty smooth so that is what I do appreciate about the uh, texturizing shears you see me just going for the tips not looking to go really into the hair just in the area that I saw it was really thick so just as you can see it kind of smoothing those areas out allowing that hair to lay down a little better so that is what I do appreciate about the thinning shears which doesn't really cut length off like the other shears uh, which is gonna give it a more of a blunt cut this is gonna cut like every other hair to allow some of the thicker hairs to kind of be in their own space and allow the hair to lay down and kind of be a lot a lot smoother. All right, so this is what we have here. Um, these are the areas that I'm kind of concerned about, so I kind of like to go over them with him to see what he thinks. Should I, uh, you know, does he want me to do a little bit more texture? Should I just take it off all together? Does, you know, does it not bother him? That sort of thing. So we kind of decided that we should just give texturizing that a, a bit of a try before getting rid of it. And it seemed like it worked out pretty well. So next process just looking to clipper over comb uh, the sides going into the top so I like to use a thicker comb from this uh, for this process not really a thin comb the thicker comb kind of allows you to error proof uh, you know this process which is very important you don't want to get all the way done with a haircut and everything's looking nice and smooth and then you go with the thin comb and then you put a dent or a spot or something in the haircut which I have done before so you definitely don't want to do that so as you live and you learn 
you find ways to go about things a lot better. So with this comb, uh, the thicker comb was the better approach for me. So it just seems to work. So anything, once again, that sticks out or that's kind of no man's land, I kind of like to get those hairs out of the way. In this case, I'm doing a little bit of freehand. You definitely have to have a very still hand when you do that. The much safer way is this way, allowing the comb to be kind of in the way of the head so you won't put any dents or bald spots in the hair that's not intended. And then on this side, it was just a little bit more hair sticking out of the side than I wanted. So I don't want to get rid of too much hair, but anything that kind of sticks over that side, I like to go for that whatever I don't want I kind of like to get out of the way with the comb and sometimes it's the littlest things that make the biggest difference so this process is a very important process to achieve a very clean haircut all right so once again using that comb and the uh, blow dryer to add some volume to the haircut you can see that hair is kind of popping up looks pretty clean there so a number one mid fade just adding some water to kind of form the haircut in place we've already put a little product in there All right so cool so this is a side version for you guys you are in the cut always like to go over my haircut a few times just to kind of ensure that everything's nice and clean so once again, went right over that lineup. As you can see, it came out even a little bit more crispier. So you don't have to go real hard or apply a lot of uh, pressure. If you have good trimmers, they will definitely do their job. All right, so here just handing him the mirror to see if there's any areas that he wants me to kind of go over. Clean up a little better. nearing the end of this haircut once again just kind of looking to fine-tune the haircut any hairs that I find out of place I just kind of want to go over those so this is before the cut definitely a long ways from uh, where he was about 45 minutes to an hour ago so this is after the cut so you guys are in the cut got a chance to see exactly how this uh, haircut happened so this is a number one mid fade. Three sixty version for you guys. Now everything looks pretty good. Checks out to uh, my client. So here just looking to clean up the neckline. So just like to finish by cleaning up the neck hairs, anything in or around the ears, and then basically just add the hot sauce. So. There's a lot of shops out there. The barber shop is definitely one that you gotta, you know, stop by to get fresh, get right. 
cool appreciate you guys for stopping by be sure to give a thumbs up if you've liked this video like share subscribe if you're not already always appreciate you guys for stopping by get the notifications for any new videos that i drop so here once again just adding the hot sauce sauce ain't never hurt nobody the hot sauce is basically an astringent which is basically just aftershave just looking to keep everything nice and clean so you don't get bumps or what have you all that good stuff so you always got to finish with the hot sauce baby i always recommend it though clients don't always take it understood it is the hot sauce So I do help you out. I usually uh, apply a blow dryer, sometimes warm or cool air, depending on the season. All right, so just keeping everything clean. Definitely very important. Once again, I'd like to send a shout out to you all for hanging out with me today, hanging out in the cut, seeing how it's done. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Take care.